Good evening and welcome to the Memorial Coliseum. Tonight, IPFW playing host to Western Illinois. The Dons looking for two wins in a row. Their last win coming last week in impressive fashion. Bill Hensley, uh, 107 to 59, domination of Anderson, where they looked fantastic. Obviously, IPFW physically dominated the game, but I think one of the key things was is that their shooting was outstanding. They shot over 63% for the game. They finally found that shooting touch and some rhythm they've been looking for all season. DeWitt Scott played fantastically in that game and in the last few games. And another guy that played very well in that matchup against Anderson, Zelko Egerich. And we have some bad news about Zelko. Zelko's been making great progress all season, particularly as we saw the last game when he was perfect from the field, perfect from the three-point line, and uh, perfect from the free throw line. So that's going to be a big loss tonight, both from the defensive side as well as the offensive side. We just talked to him a few minutes ago, and it looks like he might be out two to three games. Well, it looks like uh, the Dons really fired up for this matchup, one in which against the Leathernecks they played earlier in the year, a five-overtime epic that uh, the Dons, probably their biggest win of the year, came out 97-95. Don't know if we're going to see five overtimes again tonight, but it should be a good one. Tommy, uh, Leathernecks are very athletic. They run from 5'10 to 6'8, and everybody can run and dunk and what have you, but they play an up-tempo game of basketball. They've got an outstanding schedule they've played. Out of their 11 losses, they've lost seven less than six points, so it's going to be a great game tonight. IBFW against Western Illinois. We're going to have the tip-off and the play-by-play -play action when we come back here on my TV. I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital broadcast 33.2, Comcast 252. Moments away from tip-off here at the Memorial Coliseum. IPFW playing host to Western Illinois. The Leathernecks come in here with a record of 4-11. The Dons at 5-11. We talked a little bit a couple seconds ago about that epic game that they played back in November, a 97-95 win for IPFW, probably their biggest of the year. Five overtimes, everybody. So it was quite a game out there, and uh, we hope it follows up here at the Coliseum with another great one. Let's go through the starting lineups here. Tonight we'll start with the Leathernecks, and one of the guys you're going to have to worry about is David Jackson. He scored 32 points in the first meeting between these two teams. It's Morrison Smith following him up, Sammy Hunter, Lorenzo Taylor, and Jarek Owens Murray. And how about the Dons? They will go big once again from the uh, starting tip. Jakari Johnson will play the two. Chris Perkins going to be your point guard, and uh, then it will be Justin Hawkins. Deron Burroughs and Tyler Best. The Dons have been going for, with that uh, starting lineup for the last few games. It's been working out for him. Head coach for the Leathernecks, Derek Thomas, and head coach, obviously, for IPFW, Mr. Dane Fife. Bill, let's talk a little bit about what the Dons need to do. We talk about it time and time again. We need a quick start, and we need to shoot the ball. No question. We need to handle the Leathernecks pressure. They like to play up tempo basketball. We're going to see a lot of pressing after they score. You might be some token pressure even when they don't score, but they're an up tempo basketball team and they're best in transition. So whenever we have to get out and guard that, we got to make sure we stop that easy basket in the transition offense. IBFW coming off a game against Anderson in which they shot a season best 63.3% from the floor. Hopefully that will carry over. Shooting is something that has been a problem in the Coliseum for the Dons ever since 
making the trip across the street from the Gates Center. It just seems like they have a little bit of trouble shooting the ball in this gym, but that did not affect them in the last game against Anderson, and hopefully it will carry over tonight. We were discussing in the commercial break what a big win this would be for IPFW. No question, and we need a, a really strong bench play tonight. With the up-tempo game that the Leathernecks play, you're going to need a, a strong bench to play. We're somewhat handicapped tonight with obviously uh, Z being out as well as uh, Q again. So hopefully we'll see some strong bench play from DeWitt Scott and Demetrius Johnson uh, off the bench. Jerron Burrow's really going to have to play well with the absence of Z in the post rotation as well. So he is set in the center circle. Going to tip it up against Lorenzo Taylor for the Leathernecks. And Jerron wins that first battle of the ball game. And here come the Dons on the attack for the first time tonight. Chris Perkins wanted Jakari Johnson, now finds him. Here's Jerron. First possession of the game. And a quick turnover by IPFW. Snatching it out of the air is that guy we talked about in the starting lineups, David Jackson. Three ball on the way, no good. Put up by Morrison Smith. Offensive rebound though right away. This is Sammy Hunter. And they will reset. Tommy, as we talked uh, several times, the first five minutes of the game is really key to kind of set the tone, both from an offensive standpoint as well as a defensive standpoint. Dons are playing very good half-court defense right now. And just as I say that, uh, low the next score. Jarek Owens Mur Murray gets the shot up and in for the first two of the game. And there was that pressure you were talking about, Bill. We're going to see that uh, every time they score. That's their trademark. That's the way they like to do their game plan is to score in transition. And they anchor that with their, uh, their pressing schemes. Tyler Best had a good game the first time these two teams met. 17 rebounds in that game as Perkins hangs and bangs for the first two of tonight's game for IPFW. The Leathernecks run a really good primary and secondary break in their transition offense, so it's, uh, it's key that we defend that uh, and look for those shooters. Well, you can see the quickness in Jackson, not with the ball right now, but watch number one when he gets it. He's going to be able to get to the hoop. And just like Morris Smith was able to do right there, that is going to drive Coach Fife crazy if the Leathernecks are able to walk in on the bucket like that. Dons break the press and no good for Hawkins from outside. Down low, here is Owens Murray working on best. Wow, nice shot off glass and a quick 6-2 lead now for Western Illinois. They are really putting some pressure on. Tommy, whenever teams pressure, you've got to be able to break the press and score in that press to get them out of that. And that's what IPW's got to do there with their primary break as well. Perkins able to do it that time. They break the pressure. And he registers his fourth point of the night. Don still trailed two, six to four. Taylor jump hook won't go. We've got to push the ball in transition. We've got to be able to score a third of our points in the transition game as well. There's Burroughs. And one underneath for Jerron Burroughs. Ties the game up. And we'll put the Dons ahead for the first time tonight with a free throw. Tommy, the, the confidence that he's got in the last two months is just incredible. And the progress he's made as a player, both physically as well as playing at Division I level, has just been outstanding to watch uh, how he came in as an unproven Division I player from the JUCO ranks and now is really stepping up on both ends of the court. Well, he's unable to complete that three-point play, but here comes Jackson into the lane. He's able to put it down without a problem. He can really penetrate with the basketball. Yeah, you're going to have to watch that penetration all night long by Western Illinois. Nice ball reversal. Here's Johnson. Hawkins. Three ball. Good. Now the Dons find the lead tonight. This is Smith. Here's Best up against Owens Murray. Nice double team, but a foul call. 
Tommy, we've gotten the lead so far, but we've not started our offense in the post yet. So we've either scored in transition, scored on ball reversal, but nothing in the post yet. I think we've got to go inside and outside if we're going to be able to balance up our offensive scheme tonight. Nons did that very well uh, in their game against Anderson last week. Whenever they run their offense through Tyler, usually he has tremendous benefits for the team as far as a one-loss column. Tyler's an outstanding passer from the low post. And that foul call was on Tyler. It's his first first on either team so far tonight. Owens Murray, the third leading scorer on this team, drops in both, averaging eight and a half points a game. It's interesting we're not seeing the full court pressure after free throws. They, they press after made baskets, but not after free throws. That's usually the perfect time to set it up. Absolutely. Now they're front and best in the post. Burrow's going to try the lob. Owens Murray there to tap it out, but luckily Hawkins gets it. Perkins, another shot, long this time. Here comes Jackson, got to cut off the ball. Owens Murphy, a strong move for Owens Murray. He's off to a good start. Eight points for the junior. There's Burroughs underneath. Back and forth we go in the opening minutes here from the Coliseum. Slicing to the hoop and hitting Sammy Hunter. He's the second leading scorer on this team with just over 12 points a game. Tommy, they waste no time getting the ball up the court and to attack on the basket. Every play they look to attack. And here's a steal. Here's Hunter. Got a trailer, takes it himself, and gets it to go with the foul. Now the Leathernecks have stormed into the Coliseum and are running and gunning right now in the opening minutes. They have a five-point lead and will look to expand that lead when we come back on the other side of this break. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. People with diabetes are two to four times more likely to suffer a stroke than people without diabetes. And many who survive are severely disabled. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Learn how to reduce your risk of stroke. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. Want to talk to head coach Dane Fife? We'll join him on the Dane Fife Show on College 5, featuring highlights, insights on the Mastodons from the coach himself, Mike Maz, the host, Wednesdays at 7, Fridays at 7, Saturdays at noon. Welcome back here inside the Memorial Coliseum. Tommy Shegler along with Bill Hensley. And we've watched Western Illinois come in and in the first four and a half minutes of this game show that they are a very athletic team, one of which the Dons are really going to have to have a great defensive effort against tonight. Tommy, don't like the stat line either. We're being out rebounded almost five to one and our turnovers, uh, we've gotten two and there's none for the Leathernecks. So that pressure has been effective so far. DeWitt Scott in for the first time tonight, but this is Burroughs, a nice fadeaway by Jerron Burroughs. Quickly back up the floor though, here comes Western Illinois. Seeing a zone for the first time here by the 1-3-1 one, one zone. Interesting, putting Burroughs out on top. Great mix up, nice hustle by Hawkins. Wow. Little a la West Virginia style. Absolutely. They're not <laughs> trapping out of it, but it looks <laughs> the beeline. 
Now that 1-3-1 can really play havoc on an offense because you don't see it that often. And you don't practice a lot against it in game, in, in, in practice time. So when they show it to you, it's a surprise. This is Morris Smith. And you can see a little bit of the indecision in the Leathernex right now. Hawkins in here steal. They find Owens Murray though. Nice reverse. That was a good pass. It was. When you have Perkins on the baseline down there like that, you need his speed to be able to recover and get, not let Owens Murray get into the lane like that. Here's Scott, his first attempt of the night. The red hot streak continues. That's a good news right there. The Don's very active in their half court defense. I really like to see this changing 1-3-1. And it comes up with a steal. Oh, ah, but then Hawkins immediately turning it back over. Here's Jackson, gives it up, and a dunk thrown down by Owens Murray. That was unfortunate. Sure was. We got a great defensive possession there and then turned the ball over on the steal. And Burroughs had released, and Hawkins is trying to get it to him a little too quick, and now the Dons turn it over again. Jackson hanging and hitting. Boy, Derek Thomas, head coach for the Leathernecks right here next to us is an active coach as well, yelling out different defenses almost every possession. Yeah, he calls out his own defenses versus uh, seeing how their scoring scheme is. Nice offensive board by Best. Scott, he's usually money. Oh, can't get it to drop. And foot on the line by Xavier Price. And here comes Demetrius Johnson. This should be interesting to see how Johnson uh, handles the press. We've seen some just improving play from him from a game to game uh, standpoint in the last few weeks as he continues to try to get up to speed after starting the year with a lot of injuries. I mean, we're going to see a three or four minute rotation because again, with this pressing scheme, fatigue's going to be a factor at the end of this game. Jump ball called on the drive, and it's going to go over to the Leathernex. They waste no time in their half-court offense. Jackson comes out, David Jackson for the Leathernex. Back into the game is Hunter. He has the ball right now. Don still in the 1-3-1. That time, good penetration. Price hits on a great reverse. Xavier Price. Started his career with Purdue. That's correct, and transferred after his freshman year. Nice pass inside. Demetrius draws the foul underneath. That foul gonna go against Lewis Johnson. Demetrius trying to cut into this nine point deficit. The Dons down 25 to 16 right now. He drops the first in. Justin Hawkins comes out of the game. Tyler Best back in and especially on the down in the post. Quick rotation going for Coach Fife tonight with Zelko Egerich out. Hurt himself in the last drill of practice yesterday. Rolled his ankle. And uh, he said he could be out two to three games before the game began when we, uh, when we spoke with him. Here's Hunter. Down to Price. Owens Murray trapped on the baseline. That's where you want it. And he gets it out of there. Troy Okuson has the ball right now. He's fresh into the game. Almost threw it away. Three seconds on the shot clock, and the Dons force a turnover. Good possession that time. Great defensive possession. We are going to take a break. 25 to 18. Dons going to have the ball when we come back. Down seven.
You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. <clears throat> so, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Hey, if you want to check out an IPFW athletic event, just call 260-481-6000 or go to IPFW's website, GoMastodons.com. Tickets are available for individual events or you can get packages. Go to GoMastodons.com or 481-6000. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Demetrius Johnson to the rack. Able to put in a quick two for the Dons, cutting the deficit to five. Near the midway point here in the first half, Okasin, a line drive three, drops. Dons, nice pass by Johnson down low. Burroughs can't hit, stays with it, and can't come up with it. Here come the Leathernecks. Hunter had Okasin wide open in the corner. The big guy kicks it out. Hunter, ball on the way from the outside, won't go. Over the back, going to be called. Chris Gonzalez fresh into the game for the Leathernecks. Going to pick up his first foul. Tommy, the good news is the Dons are shooting 62%. But the bad news is the Leathernecks are shooting almost 76 So it's going to be tough if we don't get our defense picked up here. Well, it's been a concern all year long. Coach Fife has talked about it on a number of occasions. And they are playing an athletic team that can get to the rack tonight. But I like what they've done from a game plan standpoint. No question. But they've got their all, our offense completely pushed away from the basket. We're not. Again, we've not run our offense through our low post people at all. And, uh, and it's showing. That was a bad possession right there. Gonzalez the other way. Okasin, three ball on the way. Going to be long. Here comes Burroughs. Bring gets it. the outlet. Pushing it up the floor. It's got Leper. Finds Burroughs. Bad decision. Here's Price to Okasin. And Johnson won't get it underneath. Fowler won't go. Demetrius loses it, but Leper able to track it down in the corner. And a timeout called by Coach Fife, and probably a good 30-second timeout because the last few times that IPFW has had the ball offensively, they have looked out of sorts. We've been very disorganized in our half-court offense tonight. Except for our transition scoring, we've not done a good job in half-court offense. Well, you know, Bill, it, it's something that the Dons have had a problem with all year long of settling for the outside shot. Uh, IPFW is 21st in the nation in three-point field goals per game at 8.9. Uh, they're also ranked in the top 50 in assists per game. Um, and the top 100 for steals, but you know, when you make it eight a game, that says you can shoot it, but it also says you're probably hoisting up quite a few of them uh, at the same time. So, you know, they, they've had a problem with getting it down low. No question. We, we just had a, we don't have a point guard that has a pass first uh, mentality, and uh, we need that to be able to run our efficient offense that we need. Hawkins, three on the way, good. Again, there again, we had inside, outside, we had ball reversal, we had everything the coaches are looking for in our half-court offense, and it ended up with a score. Good set out of the timeout for Coach Fife. Hunter weaving his way through, gets to Price, and his elbow jumper will go. Scott to the hoop. Ball deflected out of bounds, will stay with IPFW. Tommy Western Illinois is a very good team. They played an outstanding schedule. Um, they play an up-tempo game. They're very deep in their bench. This is a team that gets could get very hot tournament time because I think they're just starting to play their best basketball right now. 
come in right now on a five game losing streak and you mentioned at the top of the broadcast as Scott gets inside and a nice slicing drive by DeWitt Scott but you mentioned at the top of the broadcast many of these losses that they've dropped as of late have been just barely a lot of them by four points six points five points so they are close and right now they have a five point lead over the Dons. Johnson just threw it right to the defender. Coming up the steal, Owens Murphy. Hunter, nice swing. Owens Murray, ball stolen away. Hawkins felt like he got a clean steal, but they actually end up calling DeWitt Scott for the foul. Only the second team foul, I should check that third team foul. Owens Murray able to drop in the first. Not a great free throw shoot, shooter at just 55%, but so far tonight he's looked very confident at the line. Going three for three. He's already got 13 points. I mean, the big stat that sticks out at you right now is that eight turnovers uh, for the Macedons to three for the Leathernecks. Uh, those five possessions, I think they've scored just about in every possession we've turned the ball over on. Resulted in a seven point lead. Perkins back in the game, so is Jakari Johnson. Johnson cut off. Here's Johnson, three, good, nothing but net. Sammy Hunter gives off to Okason. Ball stolen away inside, here come the Dons. Johnson just completely out of control on that possession. How many times have we seen the Dons force a turnover and then give it right back? They'll try to figure things out during this timeout. They're down by four, 32-28. That's where we'll sit when we come back. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Are you getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch, just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Eight minutes left to go here in the first half. Tommy Shegler along with Bill Hensley. We are watching IPFW host Western Illinois looking for two wins in a row and trying to get a little bit of a roll going on this season. Some momentum as they head in and a traveling call on Xavier Price will give the back the ball back over to the Dons and they could cut this to a one possession game. Morris Smith to check in here for Western. He's gonna take Price out. There you see a guy on your screen. Well that guy too. But I was talking about Tyler Best that we just have not uh, not see him get involved in this game plan so far. He's had two touches all night in the low post. That's the goes. third. They need to work it inside to him. He's the biggest guy on the floor, and that time he gets blocked, but look at him stay with it. Nice pass. 
And look at the openings on the outside. A little late on the ball reversal. Hawkins needed to get out of there quicker. Johnson misses on the finger roll. Three ball on the way. No good for Jackson from the corner. He's been Bring quiet it. so far. Only four points for Jackson, and you want to see them push this ball to You've floor. got to push the ball to four. You've got to try to fatigue them, scoring transition. Here's DeWitt. Tyler not flashing here to the strong side. Wide open lane there, the ball on the wing. That time it throw it out of bounds. Hmm. Johnson has struggled here, Jankari Johnson. Tommy, a four-point game, you look at the turnover differential, we've got 10 turnovers, so there are five, and those five shots, have, or those five different differentials and the turnovers resulted in a four-point lead. So we're right there, if we can just cut down these turnovers and get our offensive efficiency back. Back in the 1-3-1, one, Johnson out up top on this thing. Nice reversal, Hunter hits the three. Thirty-five, twenty-eight. Don's down seven. I think we got to get Burroughs back in the game here. Yeah, he played well in the opening minutes, and and he played well against the one-three on the one-three-one defense we had in the half court. Yeah, you need to have a guy at the top of that thing that is long. Yeah. And uh, one thing, Jerron is certainly is long. Uh, Seven, seven foot wingspan. Tyler taking it to the bucket and one. Nice strong move by the senior. But if you look at our half court offense, we had ball inside, ball outside, ball reversal twice, and all of a sudden the defense broke down. We can do that consistently. Here comes Burroughs. Mohamed Diakite going to check in for the first time tonight for the Levenex. He's a freshman out of Paris, France. Again, our shooting has been consistent tonight. We're shooting 60% from the two-point line and, and we're now almost 67% from the three-point line. So we've, we've done a great job in terms of knocking down shots. Again, just reduce the turnovers. All right, Burroughs going to relieve Tyler. Look, we'll it's a nice pat on the back from Coach Fife. Got to be more active on the baseline if you're Perkins in that 1-3-1. One, one. Too Gotta many good looks out there. there. Too many looks. Five thirty-eight left to go first half. Don's right in this thing. Just have not been able to put a couple of shots together to get themselves back even and up over the hump. Nice press break this time. The Wits got to attack, does, misses the shot though. Nice turnover to Johnson. Burroughs fouled. When they press, we have got to attack the basket aggressively. We cannot hesitate at all. We can score against that press easily. Found that time on Muhammad Diakite. Let's see if the Dons put token pressure on after the made free throw here. They did that against the Anderson game. Let's see if it might catch uh, the Leathernecks by surprise here. Burroughs drops in both. Usually pressing teams don't like to be pressed. Here's Hunter. Hunter trapped in the corner. Gets it out to Diakite. Nice ball reversal that time. Jackson fouled in the air, and that was a bad foul by Perkins. First one on Perkins, fourth on the team. So Jackson, only four points so far tonight. Going to head to the charity stripe. Again, Tommy, we've been able to eliminate his penetration the last seven or eight minutes. We've gone to 1-3-1. One, one. His game is penetration off the dribble. And obviously that's been able to contain him from a, from a shooting standpoint. <laughs> All 
All right, so the junior from Memphis steps in for the second. Only a 67% free throw shooter. That holds up this time. He hits one out of two. Three-point game. IPFW looking for win number six. Here's Burroughs inside. Nice pass that time by Johnson. That's the way to look to score in transition. And we were a little bit hesitant. Yeah, no, you're right. It was wide open. They're basically playing a 1-2-1-1, one, 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 and so we break that back line, and you've got a 2-1-1 on one or a 3-on-1 three on one position. Mm -hmm. Coach Fife didn't like that foul call. Got it on Perkins, and that's his second as he quickly picks up his second. That's going to force Coach Fife into a decision, although with 4.30 left, there's no problem having Perkins with two fouls. This is something they struggled with in the Anderson game. Inbound set that time seemed to be all over what Western wanted to do there. Owens Murray wanted the ball down low, posting up on Burroughs. Hunter instead taking it himself. Diakite and drawing a charge. Hawkins, Justin. I think we need to get Tyler back in the game here and go big again. Got a little break and a blow. Demetrius Johnson checking in right now for Perkins. It's a nice little mix up again. We had a 1-3-1 half court defense and then when they took the ball out of bounds now we switched to man and so it really caught them in surprise element and uh, their offense broke down. See they're trapping hard up front in that press and it leaves that back line wing wide open. Not good shot selection there. Leathernecks with numbers. Turning it over though. Hawkins can't come up with it, however. And foul going up with it was Price. And <laughs> you can see Coach Fife right there saying to Justin Why. Just don't foul in that situation. Although, it's gonna be an easy layup. First one good for Price. Check out the replay. Don's a near steal. In the play before that, DeWitt makes two more passes and all of a sudden we got a layup. Price knocks in both. Back out the three points. Don's hanging around, however. Hanging around, hanging around. Demetrius gives off to DeWitt. Here's DeWitt trying to tie it. Does. Thank goodness he's knocking that three point shot down. It's keeping us in the game. All right, 1 3 1 after the made basket. Almost a steal again. Downs are so close. Been great rotations on the 1-3-1. One, one. And much better on the, uh, Demetrius Johnson, much better on the uh, baseline than Perkins. Up Bring it! The rebound right there. The point guard. Four on one. Here's DeWitt, gets the defender in Good the air. Good shot fake, excellent, excellent. That yeah. time we had four on one in transition, Tommy. Great shot fake and penetration. Time out on the floor by the rest, because trailing the play, you can see at the bottom of your screen there, Owens Murray down for the Leathernecks. It's going to be a timeout on the floor. We will check and see how he is doing. But the Dons with the two-point lead now, 3-10, left to go first half. Played a good five minutes basketball, last five minutes. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, we are still here, and here's the uh, transition. You saw the rebound at the baseline. Nice pump fake by DeWitt. That probably 
the uh, the best transition bucket we've had all night long is and the one three one working to perfection that time. And if you look at the last three minutes of the game, Tommy, the coach and the staff and the Leathernecks now have to assess, should we be pressing or not? Because IPFW has gotten back in the game by scoring in transition. So they've been trapping hard at the end of the court, leaving the basket undefended down here, and we're getting three-on-one, two-on-one type opportunities. So it'll be interesting to see if they, in fact, adjust their defensive position here. Also should be interesting to see what, uh, what lineup coach comes back with here for the last three ten. Uh, last few minutes you were mentioning has, have been strong for the Dons, uh, but you'd like to get Tyler back in there, maybe pound it for these last couple minutes. Well, we've got, we're in the one-on-one -on -one position. If we can take the ball inside, okay, and inside-outside, be really selective and get to the free throw line or get an and one or so and extend this lead at halftime. But I think getting Tyler back in the post and trying to push the ball, pound the ball inside, outside movement is kind of key for the next three minutes. Coach comes back with the same lineup that he had out there before the timeout, so we'll see how the Dons do. They're set back up in the 1-3-1 already. Little wrinkle thrown in here by Coach Fife has really done the job for the Dons so far in this game. Well, I think he was so concerned about penetration with Jackson and a couple other players that that was one of the things that uh, he wanted to exploit. And he's not shown this at all yet this year to anyone. Trap. Had to pull it back out. Hunter. Jackson will try to get in the lane. Burrows there with those long arms. Alters the shot. Here come the dots. Bring it, Dimitri. Run a set here, high screen and roll. Jakari can't get the jumper to go on the baseline. Here's Hunter, quickly down the floor. Okuson brought back in there by Coach Thomas maybe to shoot over this zone. Think about the one three one though, it comes out on the perimeter and challenges you. That's where you can get the looks though. And Okuson buries in the three. That's the hardest spot to shoot a three from those the corner, so you'll take your percentages, but you're right. That open three in the corner is your Achilles heel. One point lead as 11X take the lead right back. And a good ball game from the Coliseum. Burrows a strong move and one! What a play! I reiterate again, that was a great pickup to get him to come to school here. <laughs> and his growth and maturity the last two months has just been sensational. He would have never made that play in November. Oh, absolutely not. The junior from the Bahamas, just fantastic move. He's really? physically getting stronger and he's making confidence moves that are just outstanding. And becomes a threat, both inside and outside. He can shoot the three ball. He can take you inside, take you off the dribble. Very versatile player. Also got this crowd right back into things. Not able to drop in the, th the free throw, but. We're going back to a man-to-man -man defense versus the 1-3-1. Here's Lewis Johnson working on Burroughs. Much bigger than Jerron, able to just pile, plow right over him. Need to look to score in transition. There we go, good, good. Jump ball, call, gonna stay with IPFW. They're initiating the action, however, though. Hawkins to pull the trigger on the inbound. One more pass, quick. Jakari, three, good. Great couple minutes the Dodds have put together here, going on five, six minutes of real good basketball. Now they're back to the man-to-man. -man. Johnson working on Burroughs. They feel like they have a mismatch there and he's able to get it inside. He's just got so much weight on Jakari, or excuse me, Jaron. Jaron just 205 and Lewis is listed at 230. Demetrius can't hit. Ball snatched out of the air by Jackson. Quick timeout. 
Called 30 seconds by Derek Thomas. Tommy, I just don't think today you can let guys catch in the post. I think you've got to be able to front uh, either both three quarters or full front and deny that basketball inside because these players, I don't care if you're six foot three or six foot ten, can catch and score in the low post today. There's just too many good moves. You can't double down and help side because they're such good three-point shooters today. So I think you just got to be able to play a little bit differently from a post-defense standpoint. I'm here at W Cheerleaders having a good time tonight. Another fun night at the Coliseum. IPFW right in this thing. And we talked about it several times throughout the course of the game. This would be a big win for IPFW. It would be a winning streak, two in a row. That uh, in and of itself is, is big for teams' confidence at this time of the year. And on the way to 15 wins for the season at least. <laughs> that is the prediction by Mr. Hensley. It'd be their first two-game winning streak of the year, Bill. So you really like to see them be able to pull this out. All right, here's Sammy Hunter. 15 on the shot clock, just about a second, two seconds differential, differential between shot clock and game clock. Six on the shot clock. Coach Thomas says, let's go. Two on the shot clock. Lewis, they, says he, they say he got it off in time. I'm not sure if he did. They're going to give it to him. We have a tie game at the half. You can see Coach Five talking with Burroughs. Just don't want to let Lewis get that ball that deep in the lane. Either way, 45-45. We got a tie game at the half, everybody. When we come back, we will go over the half, uh, the stats and uh, look over some of the keys here in the second half. We'll be right back. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Warning, ruthless invaders are among us and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean and drain your boat, motor and live wells and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. Make sure you go and check out all of your Mastodon sports news on GoMastodon.com. It's a great new website. They've just made it. It's uh, fantastic to go and read all of your IPFW news. Welcome back here at the half. Tied at 45 between IPFW and Western Illinois here at the Coliseum. Tommy Shegler joined right now by uh, special guest Eric Harmon. And, uh, Eric, you are a guy that uh, knows this game in and out. You've been on the floor. Most people are going to think that that means you've been on the floor as a player. Maybe you were in your younger days. We'll find that out. Many years ago. Okay. <laughs> but mainly as a ref. Talk a right. little bit about that. I, um, I worked in the Big Ten for 23 years, and that was my primary conference, but also I had some other Division I conferences. And about seven, eight years ago, uh, the Mid-American come to me and wanted to know if I wanted to be the coordinator of officials. I thought, you know, fine, that'll be an easy job. Well, <laughs> was I ever mistaken? Because after I started uh, being the coordinator for the Mid-American, uh, Mid mm -hmm. then the Mid-Con asked me to uh, come forward, which I did. And then the MAC wanted me to move to Cleveland. Well, obviously, I couldn't do that. I live in Monticello and I have a State Farm Agency in Lafayette. So uh, I've been pretty partial to the MidCon anyway. I, uh, I really like the people involved with it. I like the uh, conference office people. And the coaches all do a good job. And a lot of the schools are really class. I mean, 
look at the arena here that uh, IPFW, and I'm so happy that IPFW and South Dakota State and North Dakota State are going to be in our league next year because that's really going to help. Talk a little bit about the MidCon uh, here in a second, but I'd like to know biggest game or best story that you have as uh, as an official over all those years. Oh, I don't know. I've had a lot of uh, good opportunities. Um, obviously, uh, everybody wants to know uh, about Coach Knight. Well, I always knew when Coach Knight was mad at me because he'd give me some shot about Purdue. <laughs> and uh, being a Purdue grad, uh, I knew that I better take the highway <laughs> around there because a couple trips and he would forget me and, you know, be on somebody else. But uh, I can remember all – the latter part of my year, I had the opportunity to work the uh, NCAA tournament up there when Duke was number one and uh, California with Jason Kidd. Mm -hmm. What a tremendous game, and um, California upset him. And that's when Bobby Hurley was with the okay. – what a, what a great game. And we're sitting down in the horizon afterwards, probably a half hour later, and we hear a knock on the door, and nobody should, you know, be down there where the referees are. Well, I, I went over and opened the door, and there was Krzyzewski. And uh, I never will forget it. He said, guys, you just worked a whale of a game. We were number one in the nation, and we just got beat. But I just wanted to tell you that you guys worked a great game. I mean, wow. that took some class yeah, that took to do that class. because uh, I'm sure they thought they were going to the finals, and they got upset. Right. Well, I don't know if it was an upset or not, but, uh, you know, it was really a great ball game. It was like the state finals in Indiana because half the people were yelling for Duke and half of them for <laughs> California. So it was a great situation. Did you ever throw a tee, Coach Knight's way? Well, maybe a couple of times. <laughs> but he would really get incensed if you teched a player because, uh, I mean, he was all over that player then and you didn't have to worry about yourself. Cause, <laughs> but, uh, there you go. Well, let's talk a little bit about the MidCon. I mean, obviously the big news, IPFW gets into the conference you mentioned uh, that uh, the people involved in the in the front office involved with the inner workings of the league top-notch talk to us a little bit about what the what Fort Wayne as a community can expect from the midcon well um, I mean here's a, one of our conference teams now Western and you know they're coming on I mean the coach does a good job and they're starting to get recruits and they'll be better and better and I think this is where IPFW is. I mean, you're only going to get better. Mm -hmm. um, Oral Roberts is probably our best team this year. Um, <clears throat> you know, they played in the NCAA tournament last year and really gave, who was it, Memphis? Yep. A great run. And they've got all their players back. Um, we've got some other teams that are pretty good. Oakland's pretty good. But I just think you're going to see real good basketball and you're going to understand what a conference is like. I mean, now your players have something to shoot for yeah, every night. Absolutely. You know, that's means the biggest something. thing. Too. Oh yeah, that's the biggest thing to have a goal and to have standings that you can open up the paper, right? See what the standings are, and uh, that's such a huge thing. Last question for you: um, You've seen the talent in the midcon. Where does IPFW stack up? Are are we ready to compete right away? Are we going to need a few years? Well. I mean, I think you're. this is a good ball game. Right. I mean, it was a great game to referee because the ball's going in the hole, so we don't have to blow the whistle very much. But um, Coach Fife has told me that his recruiting class for next year is, he thinks, very good. Um, I think you can step in and be in the middle right away. Right. Um, North Dakota State is very good. Right. And I noticed in the RPIs, they're ranked higher than any of the mid-con teams right wow. now. And then South Dakota State is pretty good, too. Um, but, no, I I mean, I would be disappointed probably if uh, you weren't in the middle part and in the mix. And the big thing is when you get to that tournament, then the conference tournament. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> and whoever wins is going to the big dance. All right, Eric. Well, thanks a lot for okay. uh, some of your insight. We'll be looking for your, your refs next year and uh, hope everything works out. Thanks a lot for joining us. Okay. 45-45 right now. The score at the half. We'll be right back with stats after this. Most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. 
I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Nothing gets my blood pumping more than a packed stadium, fans cheering, and the swish of a perfect basket. When I was diagnosed with colon cancer, it became an eerie silence. Early detection helped me, and it can help you too. Today, colon cancer can be treated with minimally invasive surgery, which will get you back in the game sooner than open surgery. I want you to meet my friend, Dr. Michael Harris, who's joined me in the fight. Good one, Coach. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you're over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, Coach. Visit MyBlueStar.org and pass it on. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, what? Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Shanti. Yep, Changyokdi. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Sola. are making it happen. Lucky. Ha ha hu through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. Signal is the high. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Tied at 45 here at the half. Tommy Shegler along with Bill Hensley. We've seen quite a ball game between Western Illinois and IPFW through 20 minutes. We're going to take a look at some of the first half stats here, or first half highlights, I should say. Uh, Jerome Burroughs opened the game. Played fantastically early on and really throughout the course of the first half there was a nice up and under move. It was the Leathernecks coming out early and often with the transition game. The Dons would counter that. More Burrows a little later in the first half. They kept getting the ball down inside and getting easy looks at the hoop in transition throughout the course of the first eight minutes or so. But then the Dons switched to the 1-3-1 one, one, and really played a lot better defensively. There you see them coming up with a steal, but then a turnover right after the steal. And we saw that several times. That was Owens Murray. Demetrius Johnson played some nice minutes at the point guard position for IPFW. Tyler Best, we've been calling for him to be a little bit more involved in the offense. There you see that inside out game that Bill uh, has talked about several times in an open look by Hawkins. Jakari Johnson dropping in the three. So there's some of the first half stats. We've arrived at 45-45. We're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll go over the first half stats. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Living with diabetes as the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. 
para Medina Kilo. Right now, as many as 3 million children and adults are living with type 1 diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You got to put it in stocks. If you want to get ahead. No, no, bonds. And see these. Oh, it's tiring. You just need it under the mattress. <laughs> You want getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. All tied up at 45 at the half between IPFW and Western Illinois. Here's a look at your first half stats. The Dons with an edge in field goal percentage and three-point per percentage. They have lost the steals category and turnovers category. They're getting beat 10 to 6 in that category. Leading scorers right now, 14 points for Jarek Owens-Murray for Western Illinois. And for IPFW, it's Jerome Burroughs and Scott, both in double figures. We'll be right back. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, coach. Visit MyBlueStar.org and pass it on. Back to the Coliseum. First possession of the second half. Let's see how these first couple minutes go in a tie ball game, 45-45. Tommy Shegler along with Bill Hensley here at the Coliseum hoping the Dons can make it two in a row for the first time this year and looking for win number six on the year. And that's a good way to start. Tyler Best comes up with the steal down on the baseline. Here come the Dons, back the other way. Leathernex, get back, but Burroughs had a look. Swatted away, Rhea corrals it though, tracks it down in the corner. Perkins with a hand in the face, that's not a good shot. Jakari Johnson also can't hit. Boy, Perkins 
that is not a good shot selection. I really thought after the first game, or last game, that Perkins had learned his lesson about being a point guard, but he's sh looked shot first tonight. Tyler from the top of the key, that's his spot. <laughs> Two steals for the senior on the first two defensive possessions, and now three. In the lane, Smith can't hit. Best Bring rebound. It. Here's Perkins. He's got Burroughs. Back out to Perkins. Double teamed. Wait a little too long. Got to kick it. Nice swing. Tyler again, maybe? No, not this time. And hand check going to be called on IPFW. You know, you can't look off your guys inside. You either got to hit them with a pass or quick passes on a ball reversal. You know, just looking that pass off is just not going to get it done. And, uh, Every time we've had inside-outside ball reversal, we've had great things happen. It's it frustrating. Xavier Price out up top for the 11X. Hunter in the lane. Ball swatted out of the air by Perkins. Tommy, we've had four great defensive stops here. Yeah, good defensive intensity here in the early minutes of the second half. Johnson. Medium range, J falls for Jakari Johnson. That's the kind of start you're looking for the first five minutes of that second half. Both, so both ends of the court. Sophomore out of Grand Rapids with eight points so far tonight. Jackson, who has been quiet all night long, comes up empty. But then Johnson, ball stolen by Price, bounce pass. Swatted away by Best. He may not have been able to save it, but he saved an easy transition bucket for the Leatherneck. See, that's the only problem that Jakari has. He gets the ball in, in traffic, and he has a hard time making good decisions, and that's happened three or four times tonight. Very good player, but just needs to cut down those turnovers on good recognition. Hunter to trigger the inbound, gets it to Jackson. Back to Hunter, three on the way, no. Burroughs rebound. Push it. A lot of one and dones for Western. We had good numbers again. Hawkins, yes! Coach Tom is going to time out here. And he needs it. Don's biggest lead of the night. 8-0 run to start the second half. They lead it 53-45, to and that is the type of ball that you want to see if you're an IPFW fan. Nothing magical here at all. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility, leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Welcome back to the Coliseum. IPFW with an eight point lead. 8 0 run to start the second half. Jackson and Johnson finally called for a hand check. It's going to be Chikari's third foul. Quickly up off the bench to which Scott will replace Jakari here in the lineup. Lewis Johnson inbounds it. Gets it to Owens Murray. Hard time getting around Burroughs and boy, 
Jerron called for a tiggy tack foul. That was a bad call, Tommy. That was a very bad call. That was really good post defense. Crowd doesn't like that either. That was a great stop by Burroughs. Yeah, moved his feet well. Had Excellent. Hand straight up in the air. Didn't go for the fake at all. And fortunately, it's only his first foul. Owens Murray had been great from the line up until that point. He was four for four. Again, it's great to see the Dons continue their good shooting. 57%, almost 62% uh, from the three-point line, so it's really good to see that. But their offensive efficiency and their defensive stops this half have been terrific. Again, here's that full-court pressure. And turnover. Bad decision by Tyler. Really bad. Jackson can't hit, though. Price comes up with it and puts it in. Here comes Perkins. Dribbles out of the trap. Good patience that time by IPFW, but Perkins almost dribbled right into a trap, and they break it. There's an old basketball axiom. You always want to make the easy pass, not the hard pass. Here's Perkins, bounce pass down low to Tyler, working on Johnson, strong move, draws a foul. I think he could do that every time. There's no question. And if it's not there, he'll find the opposite shooters. That one goes against Lewis Johnson, his second foul. Tyler to shoot two. If you remember in the early portions of the year doing these games, Bill, we were talking about really two main things as Tyler misses. One was the shooting, because it was just ice cold at the start of the year. The other was the amount of fouls that the Dons were committing, the amount of fouls that the free throws that they were giving up on the other end. Tonight, you know, only nine fouls total as a team and uh, really doing the job from that standpoint. They've only given up nine points in all from the line, so. And it's a key stat, Tommy, because uh, the opposition has shot 100 more free throws than we have for the season. And charge called down low, great. Lewis Johnson picks up his third foul. Coach Derek Thomas for the Leathernex. That was a Very great makeup upset. call from that last possession <laughs> down there, so I think we're even now. That's so. exactly what that was. All reversal, patience, patience, there we go. Hit center, open up, look at the basket. Here's DeWitt Scott. They get it down low to Tyler. Reverse, there we go. DeWitt, off. Probably needed to make another pass there. One more pass, Tommy, you're exactly right. Corner was wide open. Price, the floater in the lane goes, and suddenly right back in and over the leather next down just four. Scott strong to the hoop, can't get it to go. Hunter back down, hanger goes. Boy, the pace of this game has quickly picked up. Again, their whole offense is transition, and that's what we've got to stop. And we've made some bad decisions in the half court. Oh, Scott stops the bleeding. Here's Jackson. Owens Murray. Foul called on Burroughs that time. Probably did get him. Burroughs is just so difficult to go up against in the post, though, with those long arms. No question. He is the definition of long. Timeout on the floor. Don's up by five. 14.48 left to go. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. I made you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Salam. Jam. Salam. Hey, what? Hey there. Fire fire. 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 We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. 
Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Nice night at the Coliseum. Maybe cold outside, but the Dons have been hot to start this second half. Tied at 45 at halftime. The Dons have gotten out to a five-point lead. They've led by as many as eight here in this half. So they've done the things needed to put themselves in position. We talked in the last broadcast, Bill, as Owens Murray finally starting to come back down to earth when it comes to his free throw shooting. Tommy, if we can just play consistent this game and get a win here, it's really key because with Z being out and Q being out, two really good key contributors for us. We spread some really good minutes the first half of seven players, but at the same time, uh, you know, these guys are playing good basketball right now. We just be consistent for another 15 minutes. Yeah, this will be a good win no matter what. No question. And without Z and Q in the game, it's even more impressive. Burroughs. Exactly. Great move. Oh, waved off. Waved off for a travel. Unbelievable call. Unbelievable call. Coach Fife doesn't like that one. I don't either. Jackson in the lane. Burroughs, way to adjust the shot. Here comes Perkins. Tyler looked inside, decided to swing it. Here's DeWitt, that would be big. It is. Big shot by DeWitt Scott. It almost got a four point play there. The junior out of Chicago has been playing Lights out for IPFW. He is so in control. His body's under control. He's looking for the shot. 16 points tonight. Here's Sammy Hunter. Perkins, ill-advised foul. So that one is going to go against Perkins, his third of the evening. See Coach Fife saying, hey, just put your hands in the air. We don't need you to jump like that. Smith knocks in the first. Second one, no good. Western coach Derek Thomas yelling during those free throws at David Jackson, his leading scorer, who has been quieted most of this night with just five points. He's averaging nearly 14 a game and lit the Dons up for 32 in their first meeting this year. Burroughs on the block. Tried a nice pass. Good thought, but probably shouldn't have done it. Here's Price. Tyler comes up with the steal. Boy, great effort here in the second half by Tyler Best. It's an excellent defensive stance. Quick passes, let's go. Good possession here. Perkins. Kicks. Three on the way for the big guy. And Burroughs can't hit. That one wasn't even close. He can hit that shot, though. And a quick hand check called up top on Perkins. And boy, Head coach Derek Thomas really was the result of that foul call. By the way, that's Perkins' fourth, so that's big. Demetrius Johnson gonna come immediately in, but you see uh, now Coach Fife working with Perkins, but before that, Derek Thomas screaming at the refs about a hand check about 10 seconds before they end up calling the hand checks. I really think he resulted that. He was a result of that foul call. All right, here's Jackson. Nice shot altering by Scott. Ball still down there, loose. Hawkins gonna come up with it. There's a senior making a great play. Instead of trying to pick up the ball and trying to dribble, picked it up, protect it. As a key stretch, 12.30 left to go in the game. Dons with a six point lead. Scott, big 
shot by DeWitt Scott. Wow, he is playing lights out. 18 big points, seven for 12, four for seven for the three point line, unbelievable. Yeah, you don't want to harp on one point, but man, is his stroke, it just never looks so smooth, and it's always been pretty. Right. <laughs> Bad shot there by Jackson, who's now starting to force a little bit. We can just go score here. We're going to put this game away. Foul down low, away from the ball. Maybe a little frustration. They got Chris Gonzalez fighting with Jerron Burroughs down there. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. Down to the big possession when we come back. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you remember where you were? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls you to go halfway around the world? To share your skills? To serve people you've never met. To do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps. Life is calling. How far will you go? Big possession coming out of this timeout for IPFW. They have an eight point lead, equaling their biggest lead of the night. But they have the ball looking to expand right now. We need to get our half court offense established inside. Tyler's been around the perimeter too much. We've got to get that post inside outside action and have great shot selection. Let's see what Coach Fife came up with. Scott off that time. Big offensive board by Hawkins and a foul call. See, there's the immaturity of Scott, whereby he's, he's on, but that's not a good shot. He was deep, wasn't square, didn't have good lift. Xavier Price called for his second foul. Next one is going to put the Dons in the bonus. And it would behoove them to keep being aggressive. Out up top to Demetrius. Demetrius into the lane. That time, not a great decision. Those are the types of possessions that the Dons are lacking right now. You know, when you, like you said before, we went to break as shot comes up missed by Price. When they can put somebody away, right? Like they can right here again. Let's see what they do now. You really just want to step on the throat of your opponent in a situation like this. And a head hand check violation down low. It's going to go against Gonzalez again. And that's, it does a couple things. First of all, we take time off the clock. We go inside, outside. We got ball reversal. We got a good three man game going on one side, a two man game on the other. And again, that's just good, smart basketball with a lead like this. Well, I thought that was the 17th foul. But uh, I'm actually wrong because I was looking up and that's the Dons as missed shot there and ball goes out of bounds back over to Western. I should clarify, uh, there's only five team fouls right now on Western. It's 16 fouls for the Dons. So the next Dons foul is going to put Western in the bonus and it's going to be two before the Dons get into the bonus. Okay, got to D it up again. Bryce got Okerson coming off the screen. DeWitt fought through that. Now the pick and roll. Owens Murray has to hit that shot, unable to. Demetrius will hold it up without numbers. We are nearing the midway point of the second half here from the Coliseum. Dons looking for two in a row. Burroughs slowly, slowly backing down. Owens Murray flopped, didn't help Burroughs at all. Hunter 
around two defenders. Into the lane, ball swatted by Hawkins. Here comes Demetrius against Okasin. And Demetrius loses the handle, finds Burrows. He puts it off the glass, can't get it to go. Okasin, three, good. Boy. Seven point swing right there. If we lose this game, look back to the 950 mark because that's where we will have lost it. Yep, two layups and the three we gave up. Mm, seven point swing. Demetrius spinning into the lane, out of control. Too much one-on-one -on -one basketball. Coach needs a timeout. Yep. Half court offense is completely broken down. Yep, gotta go back through Tyler. And a hand check and that is gonna put Western into the bonus. Burroughs called for the foul. His third. Here's Jakari Johnson. He is gonna relieve Jaron. Don's gonna go a bit smaller now. A real three guard lineup as the crowd gives Burroughs a hand for his solid minutes that he's put out on the floor tonight. All right, so the lead can shrink down to three. If Owens Murray can put this in. He's short, so we'll stay at four. So Demetrius Johnson, Jakari Johnson, DeWitt Scott, and then Hawkins and Best in the post. They want to get it down to Best. Way outside of the lane. Up and under move and travel. And Fife needs to watch himself. Coach Fife is out on the floor. See assistant coach Jeff Tungate kind of Tugging at his jacket there. That was a bad call, and Coach Thomas is down here working, working that official right before that possession. Key moments. Jackson to the lane, can't get it to go. Ball goes out on the Dons. Next two possessions are critical here, Tommy. This is a key defensive stop here, and then we've got to score on the other end. Break this momentum for the Leathernecks. Okasin inbounds to Owens Murray. Price, look for him to get it to Jackson. He's their scorer, although he hasn't been that tonight. Totally different defense philosophy this half. IPFW has been fronting the low post. Price hits. Price able to hit. And we're back to a two-point game. It was eight just a second ago. Bounce pass, not a good one from Demetrius, and he has had a rough couple minutes out on the floor. Jackson to Price. They can take the lead with a three. Instead, they'll go for the tie. Johnson, strong move inside. Good defense that time by Tyler. Demetrius just going to walk it up the floor. Tyler needs a blow. He's asking for a blow to get pulled, get Burroughs back in the game here. Demetrius driving on Jackson, foul called. And we have a timeout on the floor. Don's nursing a two-point lead, trying to hang on. Demetrius Johnson will be at the line when we come back. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum, Agaricus Bisporus, <gasps> Allium Sepa. Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Honey. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. You can buy ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. 
Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. IPFW trying to hang on to a two-point lead, have gone through quite a rough stretch over the last four to five minutes after, four to five minutes before that of solid basketball. The last couple minutes, Bill, have not been pretty for Dane Fife and the Dons. Nope, we were leading 62 54, and we had uh, three possessions there, two layups that we blew and uh, gave up that three-point shot. Could have been easily 15, and now it's down to two. <laughs> Elk Johnson trying to stop the bleeding. Tyler stays out there, however. He was calling for a rest before the timeout, as you mentioned. Um, but he stays in there as Demetrius bricks the first free throw. Dron Burroughs is back in the game for... Justin Hawkins. Been our Achilles heel all year long. We're shooting 60% for the year versus our opponents of almost 72. Johnson able to drop that one in, but it remains a one possession ball game. We need to stop here. One more solid run by the Dons could end it, but at the same time, one run by the Leathernecks could end it as well. Yeah, we've not seen the 1-3-1 one, one at all this half. It's been straight man. Also front of the low post. We're really denied their inside game. Owens Murray, strong move off glass and in. Are you surprised by no 1-3-1 one, one here in the, with the success they had? No, I think he'll come back with it a little bit. But I think he got what he wanted to the first half by stopping Jackson. Burrows off the pick and roll, pass too high by Demetrius, and he has struggled. Price gets it to go with the foul. And suddenly the Dons down a point. Ten one run, Tommy. Xavier Price, the fourth leading scorer on this team. Just over eight points a game. Drops in the free throw. Nice strong move. And he has 13 tonight. Don's now down two. Johnson, nice pass to Best. Good look by Jakari Johnson. Jackson, boy, he has been quiet. Quickly down to Lewis. Lewis Johnson able to put it in. Near the six minute mark. Here's Best, quick move on Johnson and a hand check called. Going to be a fourth on Lewis. And the Don's now in the bonus. So here's Tyler at the line. Two free throws would tie this game up. Oh, that one not even close. Jackson into the lane. Pass to Johnson. Foul call. That one's going to go against Tyler. Tommy, this would be the time to put that 1-3-1 one, one back in. You know, the last six possessions, they just dribble drived, uh, just attacked the basket, and we've just not been able to defend it, both from the perimeter as well as the post. So uh, we've got to do something defensively to change this flow. Johnson rattles the first one around and in. And there's a guy that you'd like to have out there tonight. Zelko Egerich, talked about it earlier. He rolled an ankle in the last drill in practice yesterday. Gonna be out for two or three games. And uh, they miss him inside right now. He's been playing fantastically, he was perfect from the field in the last ball game. 
against Anderson and has really been just a good part of the rotation for IPFW. They don't have him tonight. It's gonna have to be the guys on the floor. Burrows inside and one, throws it down with both hands. And he's fired up. Nice look from Tyler. Now these free throws, Bill, are gonna come become very important as we get down the stretch if we remain this close. Jerron able to knock that one in, makes it a one point game, game again. And both teams in the bonus. This is what the coaching staff has talked about over and over again. Learning how. Now we see the 1 3 1, coach. Well, there you go. Got to learn how to win these close games. Exactly. Come stretch. Good call, but Dane Five. Good call. Having trouble, you can see it affecting them. Eight seconds, the shot clock. Price, strong down the lane, oh. whistle, and a foul. Tyler Best. Crowd didn't like that one. Uh, I think they might be wrong, though. Here's Price at the line. Drops in the first. He's been good tonight. Four for four from the line. 14 points overall. Second one off. Burroughs, nice box out underneath. Perkins. Back in the ball game now. Chikari, nice pass down low. Burroughs, those long arms, snatch it out of the air, then put it in the hoop. Tie ball game. Right back where we started this half at. Five minutes exactly to go. Perkins got to move on that baseline. That's Chikari. He's got to get down there. Owens Murray able to get the easy hoop. That's the problem when you got uh, throwing this thing at halftime because they've been able to go through and diagram at halftime how to run that little triangle to get the looks they want. Okay, Coach Five calling out the set. Perkins can't get it to go. And then a foul on Burroughs. Fourth foul on. Check that. They only have him for three fouls. I'll take it. I had him for four. Nope, now they've corrected it. Four. Should have gone with my gut. That's big, though. But you got to leave him in at this point. Absolutely. Although I think Hawkins is coming to get him. Jackson rattles that one around and in. We need his offense because we've not been able to score in a half court. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess you're thinking it's this close. Keep him for the last three minutes. Maybe give him a quick blow. But, man, he's got to get up off that pine and get back in there pretty quick. Jackson drops in both. Out to a four-point lead. This becomes a key possession now. Don't want it to ever get more than three possessions once you're under five minutes. Don's having trouble getting into the offense. Scott, he's been quiet the last several minutes. Double team that time. Reverse right quick, pass. quick. Jakar, he's got to hit that. And can't get it to go. You're right though, slow on the swing. Real slow. Owens Murray. Timeout called by Derek Thomas. 30 second timeout. All right, Mr. Hensley, if you are in the 
huddle just to our right down on the other side of the floor. What are you saying to these guys right now with 353 left down four? I think you got to get Burroughs back in the game, go big again, get Perkins out of the game since Chris is really not looking to distribute the ball and get our offense started. You know, get Johnson back in the game, either Jakari Demetrius along with uh, Scott. And we've got to have two or three key defensive stops and run our half-court offense. Go inside, outside. Like you said, we're in the one-on-one -on -one situation. We don't have to be impatient in taking good shots. You know, something we haven't talked about. I have to question uh, as we see Burroughs able to, boy, he just gets up there and gets that ball out of the air with those arms. Demetrius has struggled in the second half, and Perkins has struggled all game. Where's Kyle Savely at? That's a good point. Where, why have we not seen Kyle Savely get this offense jump started as he's done so many times off the bench? Travel. Again. Uh, make up call. Timeout on the floor. Another quick one. We'll be right back. It's going to be an exciting finish here from the Coliseum. Stay with us. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard. I go to class. And I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's gotta feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Are you in there? What's up, the show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. 3.40 left to go. The crowd in it here at the Coliseum. They've watched their team be up by as many as eight here in the second half, but now have fallen behind by four, and every possession going to become very key down the stretch, this one especially. Perkins still in there at the point guard position. Jakari Johnson also in there. Tyler Best has come out of this ball game. Hawkins and Burroughs down in the post. Nice give and go. Actually, it was more of a pick and roll, but nice play. Cut to the hoop by Burroughs. Drew the foul. The third foul on Jackson. Again, as a coach, you hope through 16 games, this is where your team kind of rises to a new maturity level, where you're down four points, you're in the game, you've led the game by eight points in the second half, that you can collect yourself and do the things that's gotten you ahead in this game and not be impatient and not panic and come away with a victory tonight. Those are the things in the next three minutes we're going to look at. Burroughs, 62% free throw shooter on the year, drops in the first. This one also big, make it a two point game. And it goes. Flirted with falling off the front of the rim, but it goes. Big defensive now, possession here. I'd like to see the, the crowd get into it here a little bit. Three minutes left to go. Here's Jackson. Jackson driving on Scott, distributing. Owens Murray cut off. Extra pass, Hunter, that's a big one, miss. Burrow's big rebound. All right, good possession here. Here come the Dons. Scott was wide open, coming off a screen. Got it to him too late. Perkins got to make that pass quicker. Now Perkins has it down low, gets Price in the air, gets it out. Jakari in rhythm, hits it! Big basket, big, big basket. Dons retake the lead, 2.26 left to go. Defense, 
Hunter. Got a mismatch against Hawkins. Oh, and a foul called down low on Hawkins. He had come to the ground. Coach Fife upset over on the sideline. Assistant coach Jeff Tungate really should get some extra pay tonight for the uh, job he's had to do <laughs> restraining Coach Fife several times tonight. Here's Owens Murray. He's been good from wide tonight, seven of 10, and misses that one at a key time. Lorenzo Taylor gonna relieve Lewis Johnson. Second one. Gets in there, so we're tied back up. 2.12 left, left to go. Here's Perkins, got Johnson coming off the screen, almost lost it, re-corrals, go down to Burroughs. DeWitt working hard away from the ball, came off a curl. 14 on the shot clock, need a good shot here. Johnson in the lane, can't get it to go. It was a nice move by Jakari, gotta get back. Here comes Hunter, into the lane, to Price. Don's do a good job of getting back. 135 left to go. Price. Jackson, weak side. Owens Murray working on Burroughs. Fade away goes. Tough shot by Owens Murray. Minute 20 to go. Don's down by two. Here's DeWitt. It's a Hawk. Hawk lob inside, Burroughs wide open. Nice pass by Justin Hawkins. Tie ball game, 60 seconds left to go from the Coliseum. Here's Price, breakdown defensively, but the Don's able to save it. Foot on the line by Burroughs. It's gonna stay with 11X. Boy, Xavier Price was able to get loose down there on that baseline, but the Dons did a good job of recovering. 50.2 seconds left in this game. Now they're arguing over a shot clock situation. They want... The the 11 at coaching staff saying that the ball hit the rim, but still 22 on the shot clock. Here's the inbound to Price. Look for Jackson to get it here. He's their guy. He's been so quiet tonight, though. It's almost like they haven't even looked for him. 12 on the shot clock. Taylor. Six on the shot clock. Jackson in the lane. Block by Burroughs. 30 seconds, shot clock is off. Dons can hold for the last shot in a tie ball game. Don't call timeout, we just continue motion. 20 seconds, you might remember they went five overtimes the last time these two teams met, coming down to the wire. Again here at the Coliseum, Burroughs with 10 seconds to go. Eight seconds to go. Jakari, five seconds to go. Here's Burroughs inside, gets it to go! With 1.6 remaining, Jerron Burroughs. What a play, what a look by Jakari Johnson. And Burroughs nets what could be the winning bucket of the game is 22nd and 23rd points of this game. Tommy, great move by Dane Five not to call a timeout, so they didn't set up the defense. They kept running the same little motion curls that they'd gotten before team was very, very patient. I guess the thing, point I made with three minutes to go, the maturity this team has shown by losing an eight-point lead, getting down four points, coming back, making a score with 1.6 seconds left, outstanding. Look Those at Burroughs, bodies all over him, able to go up strong with the right hand. 1.6 remains, and barring a miracle, the Dons are gonna get out of here with a win. They're second in dramatic fashion over this team.
and a big, big step up for the Dons. This is the kind of maturity, the kind of elevation that Coach Feist has been looking for. Consistency from the offensive end, defensive end, not losing games when they get down where they have a chance to put teams away. It's just a great, great step for this program. Yeah, I think that that is the best word, step. It's, a, it's the step that they have been trying these guys, uh, trying for these guys to make. And uh, they've been unable to do it. They've been unable to close out several games along the way or in the early portions of the year. And, uh, Coach Tungate, Coach Fife have said it to me on a number of occasions. Boy, we just like to be able to figure out a, win, a way to win games down the stretch. Well, they might have figured it out tonight. They got 1.6 remaining to find out. Just remember Duke and Kentucky, 1992, 1.9. We it got 1.6. It can happen. Chris Gonzalez will inbound the ball in a quick 30-second timeout. timeout. Real good timeout. Saw the alignment and now will adjust the defense accordingly, will Coach Five? You remember the old Valpo play. This is what they have a chance. I think Valpo ran that same play 1.6 where Bryce Drew got the three-point shot to propel them to the final 16 round of the NCAA. Almost like a hook and ladder. <laughs> Bo Boise State exactly. style. <laughs> All right. Dons go with Perkins, Jakari Johnson, Scott Burroughs, who hit the potential game winner, and Justin Hawkins. Okason going to inbound the ball, looks to be for the Leathern X. They have Hunter, Jackson, Price, and Gonzalez all in the game. Price, Jackson, and Hunter all at midcourt, as you can see right there on your screen. This is set up for the Valpo play. Here's Okason looking, looking, finds Jackson. He heaves, shots, oh. won't go, close, but could not hit it at the buzzer, and the Dons get out of here with a 79 77 win, a signature win for the Dons team and an impressive win. They were up, tied at the half, up and then down, able to come back in the end and pull out a win. A game winning shot by Jerron Burroughs with 1.6 to go is the story here. The Dons with a two game winning streak for the first time this year. We have a lot more to talk about when we come back. Assistant coach Jeff Tungate going to join us. We'll go over stats and we'll tell you everything else we can recapping this game when we return. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Warning, ruthless invaders are among us and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean, and drain your boat, motor, and live wells, and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean, and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. There you see it, the final score, 79-77, a game that's not going to soon be forgotten here at the Coliseum uh, by the people in attendance especially, but you watching at home as well, I'm sure that you could see the drama that occurred in this gym tonight. Uh, really, you cannot emphasize what a big win this was for this team at this exact time, Bill. I mean, it to, to do it the way that they did it and going ahead, falling behind, and then being able to make the plays they needed to down the stretch. You know, when we took the Christmas break, uh, Dane was concerned that he was losing his team in terms of confidence. And I think these last two games, particularly this game, the things they were able to do as a team was shooting the ball well consistently. So for two games now, we shot the ball consistently well. They played well on both ends of the court. 
uh, and they beat a very, very good team tonight. So great, great step for the program. Assistant Coach Jeff Tungate joining us right now. He is getting wired up and a lot to talk to him about. We're going to be sitting here and interviewing Coach for quite some time after this one. So many things to talk about. I just got one thing to say before you start. You're going to be here Saturday, right? <laughs> Our undefeated course, streak with you is I, still continuing. I was wondering if you were going to remember that. I we didn't were, forget that. We were already talking about 3-0 uh, and o with me and Bill in these chairs. That's exactly right. You know, uh, a side deal can be made. We, okay. We'll have to work that out. Okay. Uh, let's talk about this. I mean, from the beginning of the year, I can remember one of my first conversations with you this year. You said, boy, we just got to make sure, or we just got to have a way, figure out for these guys to win games down, stretch, uh, down the stretch. And it maybe that was done tonight because, boy, they make the plays. Yeah, they really did. And, and I thought we got key stops. Our defense, again, the first half wasn't very good. And but when we needed stops, we got them. And I thought Jerome Burroughs played a great game tonight. Fantastic. And it's a huge shot that he made down the stretch. I thought Jakari Johnson was really good tonight. Um, Chris Perkins did a good job. Uh, you know, we just got the key stops, and, and then that's what's going to take for us to win basketball games. And, you know, unfortunately at the end of that last shot, we had flashbacks of Eastern Michigan again because that shot was right on line. We thought, oh, no, here we go again. But luckily the breaks went our way tonight. 23 points from Burroughs. And uh, you mentioned the defense. Kind of surprised to uh, hear you say, that you were disappointed with the defense, although you give up 45 in the first half, so I guess that is a good point. But I was, I felt good about you guys going to the 1-3-1. Felt like that was at a good point in the first half because you guys were giving up a lot of transition baskets, and that seemed to, to slow it down. And I thought it changed the pace of the game for us because I think we can play a fast or slow game, and I think for them to be successful, they really need to get up and down, get the ball inside, and, and, and try to get to the foul line. I thought our zone really did a good job where we didn't foul, we, didn't, we kept them off the line, it kind of took away their inside game a little bit. And you know, that's something we've been working on the last three weeks, and, and, and it's been a, a good addition for us. And, and I thought tonight really it came, like you said, at the right time to change the complexion of the game. Let's be honest, Coach has been talking to me, knows that I'm a big West Virginia fan. He stole it from John Beeline, didn't he? The Pre one that, one. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's worked for them, so we figured it would work for us. But, uh, but actually, no, we, we got some, 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 some information from them. We got some information from Detroit Pistons, one of their assistants that runs it as well, and has been really helpful with us on that. And, you know, we've called quite a few people um, just to, to explore it. And our guys are still learning. I mean, you see, we, we gave up some good looks in it tonight. We weren't where we were supposed to be every time. And, right. and, and with our injuries we've had, we had guys that were playing spots in that zone that have never played the spot. I mean, we had Justin Hawkins playing the top. He's never played the top before. Right. We had, um, I think we had Justin and, and playing the middle spot. Burroughs playing the middle spot. They've never played there before, and they did a good job adjusting. And we kind of had a... Had a, had a wing in a little bit, but those guys did a good job adjusting. <laughs> well, Burroughs is just so long up top in that zone that it that it makes it difficult. That's what you need yeah. up there. Well, the thing is, the, the whole key to that zone is to make passes go over top. We can't give up direct passes. Right. And where they hurt us when they penetrated against the zone, they got those direct passes for shots. But when they have to float passes, our guys are athletic enough and quick enough to close out on those. And with him being so long, they've got to float that pass to the shooters. Right. And whenever you practice, I mean, you're practicing direct passes, catch and shoot. You never practice loft passes, catch and shoot. That's so true tough for shooters to get in rhythm with that zone and, and I think even though they got good looks they weren't rhythm looks. Right. Uh, you mentioned a couple guys out. You know, Quentin has been out for the last several games but Zelko doesn't play tonight. Rolls an ankle yesterday. That made this win even more impressive in a lot of ways. Yeah, it really did. I mean, we're, we're really banged up right now but that, there's no excuse. I mean, there, there's a reason you get 13 scholarships in Division One that gives guys a chance that maybe don't get as many minutes to step up and play and do the job for you. So um, that's why it's important that everybody stays ready in practice to get it done and you know, I just thought that that tonight, you know, down the stretch, it's just it's nice to see guys make plays at critical times. Well, uh, first two-game winning streak of the year, that's big. You know, anytime you can start to get it rolling and, uh, you know, another winnable game coming up uh, at home again. So this is uh, a key stretch for you guys, and just congratulations. Uh, best win of the year that I've seen. I know the, the epic against these guys the last time was pretty good as well, but uh, fantastic win at home, and congratulations. And we expect to see you there Saturday. I'll be there. <laughs> All right. I'll be there. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month.
Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You gotta put it in stocks. If you want to get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CDs. Cap, you gotta gotta go. Go. Get a balance. Oh, you uh, stick it under the mattress. <laughs> You want Getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, coach. Visit mybluestar.org and pass it on. Can't say it enough. Final score, 79-77. IPFW with a dramatic, exciting two-point win here at the Coliseum. Zelko Egerich forced to sit and watch tonight's game. Well, he had a really good view of a fantastic ball game, one in which maybe the Dons finally came of age a little bit and did a lot of growing up before our eyes, Bill. No question, Tommy. It was just a great game for uh, IPFW to make a next step for getting that at least 15 victories that we've been talking about. <laughs> uh, I think we've seen consistency now that they've got the monkey off the back here where they can score consistently from the half court, uh, both at the inside as well as the three-point line here. Uh, they feel really confident. Uh, you know, they only played six guys with any extended minutes tonight. Um, you know, having not having Q here, not having Z here, really forced us to uh, be protective of the basketball. But to lose that lead from 62-54, to lose the lead, and then to come back and, and, and play the way we did down the stretch, it's just a real compliment to all the players and the coaching staff to believe in the system, believe in each other, and, and, and being patient with what they've uh, been taught for the last three months. Let's look at the uh, stats and go over the leading scorers. I uh, guess we should start at the top for IPFW because uh, Jerome Burroughs just had a fantastic game. We'll look at the uh, the team stats. You see Don shoot over 50% again uh, from the field and uh, look pretty good. They shoot over 50% from uh, behind the arc as well. So that's that's always um, a good stat when you can get that done. They're only out outscored at the line by nine. It's been much worse in uh, in other games. And you see the 19 assists. That's uh, again above their average. And they only lose the rebounding uh, battle by one rebound. So uh, all in all, the some fantastic team stats. And then when you look at the individual stats, like I said, Burroughs just fantastic tonight. 23. He leads the way. DeWitt Scott, 18. Jakari Johnson, the other player in double figures for IPFW with 11. You missed Coach Tungate. He said we are to be here Saturday no matter what. I don't know what your other plans are at this point, but uh, cancel them. Or uh, Tungate's going to be after you. We'll be here. <laughs> you know, the, the other thing is, is that as we talked the last game, is that suddenly now with Z contributing, and hopefully we get Q back soon, is that suddenly the second half of the season we give them a different look with four strong post players, our front line players, and four really tough guards on our perimeter. You know, we give these teams a totally different look than they've seen the first time. You know, I think this is a totally different IPFW team that played Western Illinois at Western Illinois where we got a five-overtime, two-point victory over there. This was a different team because of the way we play and the looks in our rotation. So I think it's going to be very an exciting second half of the season here because, again, players are really starting to develop. Players are really starting to buy into this whole team concept. They're getting it done both from the offensive side as well as the defensive side, and I just think there's tremendous momentum going right now for the Dons. Two in a row, 79-77 the final tonight. That will do it from the Coliseum tonight. Thanks a lot for tuning in to my TV digital broadcast. 
33.2 on Comcast 252 at um, and on February 8th, more Mastodon men's basketball action when the Bison from North Dakota State University come to town. That is on Tuesday, February 8th, 7 o'clock for Bill Hensley. I'm Tommy Shegler saying so long from the Coliseum.